Well, hey, church. As you know, on Wednesday, we had a very significant meeting in the life of Rosebank Union Church. I would even call it perhaps a historic meeting where we voted on some significant changes to our church. And so I wanna give you just an update or a summary of what those changes were uh, for your benefit and for those that, that weren't here and for those online listening as well. So number one is we voted to change the rules of the church and the constitution. And this all had to do around the leadership structure changes that had been proposed or had been working on since December last year. So December last year, a team got working on changing the structure involving elders, pastors, and deacons. At our September meeting uh, online this year, we approved the principles around those structural changes. And then at our meeting on Wednesday, the vote was to have finally approved the changes to the Constitution and the new set of rules. And I'm happy to say that those votes went through with 99.6% approval. Um, yeah, that's pretty, pretty epic. In fact, the changes to the rules was 100%, so such a great vote of affirmation in this new direction as a church. Now, I realize for some of you, like, hey, I mean, that doesn't sound that exciting, rules and constitution, uh, but it really does free us up to minister in an effective way. So it's really uh, quite an amazing uh, change for us. Then we had to elect a new eldership into this brand new leadership structure. So the whole church council and deacons stepped down and new elders elected. We brought 15 names for elders to the church, and all of those 15 names were approved as elders with over 85% uh, approval. Then we took out of that, we had to um, elect five members to the brand new EGB, that's Elder Governing Board. And so we brought five names proposed for the EGB and all of those five names were also approved with over 90%. Isn't that amazing? So heading into next year with a brand new leadership structure, brand new leaders in that structure. Uh, September meeting, you'll remember, also included this new staff structure. So all very exciting. Then of course we had time for the, for the budget presentation and for feedback on our finances uh, from this year. And I'm pretty sure Treasurer and Finance Committee will say that this year's budget preparation was the hardest ever, given just the, the weakened financial position that we find ourselves in this year and just a whole bunch of uncertainty as to what next year is going to be like. So I wanna give you just a breakdown of our financial results uh, year to date. As uh, some of you might've been at the meeting, this by the way is a, is a, is a non-accountant's breakdown uh, of those numbers, right? So, so year to date, our, our offerings are four million lower than what was expected or hoped to come in, what was budgeted for for 2020. And I'm sure we all know the reasons why for that. Um, as we've given feedback on already, we immediately slashed all of our expenses and of course expenses were lower with us being under, under lockdown. And so we've ended up year to date with a, with a deficit of 1.7 million, not the full four, which is good news. Most of that, by the way, was also losses incurred by the hospitality company, which we did have to close a few months ago, and even some capital expenditure that happened even before lockdown happened. Uh, and I say that just to say that uh, staff have really managed expenses so well during this year, given the current financial climate. I just wanna commend the staff for that. Monthly though, that does still mean that every month we have run at a deficit in the pandemic except for one month. And as you know, Finance Committee every month kind of evaluates this, can't run at a loss every month forever. And of course, the biggest cost item on our budget are salaries, about 66% of our budget is salaries. So every month, Finance Committee have had to look and see whether they needed to cut salaries. Uh, we're just so grateful that hasn't happened yet this year. But uh, with October being lower again, kind of since July, it actually triggered the, uh, the, with the Finance Committee, hey, we actually have to initiate perhaps salary cuts. But thankfully, that, that hasn't been proposed for December, given that there's already no bonuses, which is pretty much everybody, I think, in the country, unless maybe you work for a hand sanitizer business or perspex screens or the like. Uh, but we have had to give notice to staff that those cuts are likely for, uh, for January. And the same applies to, to our missionaries. Now, in terms of the budget for next year, 
what, what we have budgeted for is a budgeted income or hoped for budgeted income uh, for next year still 15% higher of what we expect to still get this year, which, which you can imagine is, is quite a lot, but that budgeted amount is still almost 10% lower than what was budgeted for this year. See what I mean? So it's higher, we're expecting more than what we got this year due to the conditions, but it's still much lower than what we expected to get this year. And I suppose part of that is hoping that there is going to be at least some kind of economic uh, recovery. The Finance Committee presented kind of two budgets. The one was a base budget and an aspirational. What we voted on was actually the base budget, which is a very stripped down kind of wartime pandemic uh, budget going into next year, which includes, again, the big budget items, no salary increases, staff and missionaries, um, and also a ministry budget 30% lower than what was budgeted for this year. And so you kind of add that all together and we're actually going into next year planning on spending 10% less on all of our ministry expenses than we plan to spend this year, which is not ideal. Uh, and on top of that is there's no budget in that base budget for capital expenditure. Um, and there are just some things we would really want to do to improve our online church. There's things that we need to do, but there's nothing in the budget uh, for now. And that'll be assessed as we go next year. Perhaps there'll be opportunity to kick into the aspirational budget. So I wanted to give you this, bra this breakdown just so that you're aware of just how urgent our financial situation is. Uh, we're looking at heading into next year with reduced ministry expenses and the inability to do some upgrades, which you really need to do. Uh, this week, our finance committee will send out a detailed letter. If you're one of those people who likes all the detail, that'll be uh, in there. Uh, but I encourage you, if you have any questions, please d uh, don't hesitate to contact our treasurer or finance committee. And of course, I mean, we all know these are difficult financial times and not just for us as a church, but for you and, and the whole country as well. We do wanna just say a big thank you to those faithful core of Rosebank that have sustained ministry this year. A lot of you through sacrificial giving and giving far and above and beyond perhaps what you're able to at this time. Um, do you wanna make an appeal? Some people do give their tithes annually or quarterly. And if, and if that's you, we wanna urge you to consider doing that before the end of the year if that's still possible. Or maybe even some of you are newer uh, or don't give and wanna, or perhaps even some watching online that watches a supplement to their faith and wanna encourage you if you're able to give uh, towards our ministry um, to help us become stronger as you reach Joburg, not just here, but online as well. However, the bottom line is while the financial outlook uh, is bleak, there's no doubt in our minds still that God is still lifting our sail. We're just so sure we're heading into the new year, yeah, with, with a new budget, but also in the brand new church. It's kind of the irony that I was saying on, on Wednesday night. Uh, is that when I stood up here 15th of March for, for my induction, kind of the idea was, hey, Rosebank is such a great ship, doesn't need any changes, we're just gonna lift the sail. Now here we stand, eight months later, and everything's been radically changed, but at the same time, we've lifted the sail. It's kind of like we've been building this boat while it's been flying, uh, and it's been a, a thrilling year, to say the least. Um, and I kind of end by just quoting the old, my old chairman of eldership at previous church always used to say this, that God's work done God's way never lacks God's supply. Amen.